Hi there guys, this is Joel Kennedy with Kennedy Violins and today I thought I'd do a video on how to hold a violin bow. Now there are a lot of videos out there on how to hold a violin bow, but I thought perhaps I could uh, simplify it a little bit. Now it can be a pretty complex thing, um, but you know, I, I've taught a lot of different students over the years, uh, beginners, advanced students, and I've distilled it down to three easy steps. Because I found no matter who you're teaching or who's trying to learn, um, really simplicity is the key. So uh, without further ado, I'm just going to show you the three easy steps. I'm going to show them twice, and then I'll go a little bit more detail about the philosophy behind the proper way to, to uh, hold a bow and, um, and uh, how to practice it and whatnot. Okay, so first of all, if you hold the bow by the, the screw here with your left hand, right? And um, then you want to take your bent thumb and you're going to insert it right here uh, where the, um, the grip meets the frog. There's a little bit of a space here between the frog and where this little leather grip is. You're going to put the tip of your thumb there and then the hair of the bow is going to touch your thumb. So this is one, then two, you're going to put, see the first crease in your fingers here? The first crease of these three fingers? that's going to go on top of your bow. So one, two goes the crease fingers, then bent pinky on top of the bow. Bent pinky. Okay? And that's really your bow hold right there. It's not really any more complicated than that. Well, actually it is, but that's the, simplifi the simplified way of looking at it. So I'm going to do it again a couple times. Remember, two fingers are always bent, your thumb and your pinky, your thumb and your pinky. They must always be bent, though. So, bent thumb, the tip of your thumb goes right here, right there. Then the three fingers go on top of the bow, on that first crease, and then your pinky goes on top of the bow, right? The pinky is the only bow, that, the finger that goes on top of the bow, and that's it. So, one, two, three. Let go with your left hand and turn it over. You can practice this over and over and over, and over again. One, two, three, turn it over. Okay? Now we'll try that from a little bit different view. I'll try standing up here a little bit. So, one, two, three, turn it over. Okay, now we'll try another angle. Okay, one, two, three. Oops. Okay. It's uh, fairly easy to teach this when you're in the room with a person, but with all the different cameras and stuff, uh, it's definitely not as simple. So, last time, bent thumb, one, Two, three. Pinky on top, bent. Okay, there we go. That's it. Okay, so now a little bit about the philosophy of the bow hold and some things to remember, some little tricks, okay? So holding the bow properly is probably one of the most unnatural, natural things that you have to do on the violin. Every way in which you hold the bow is practically 100% counterintuitive. The way we want to hold the bow instinctively is like this, to grip it like a bat, right? So you can stick it, you know, so you can use it as a weapon, you know, Jedi, right? Um, but the reason why you don't is because it's not really a bow hold, it's more of a bow guide. Your hand's job is not really to hold the bow necessarily, but to guide the bow to guide this bow up and down your violin. Now, when you hold this bow properly with your bent thumb and your bent pinky and your fingers laying down the sides like this, when you hold the bow properly, it's going to feel like you're going to drop your bow. That's correct. If it feels like you're going to drop your bow and you can barely hold on to it, well, you're probably doing it right. Why is that? Well, 
The reason is, is because your violin holds your bow up, not your hand. So you've got your violin up, now your bow is on the strings. So really, the violin is doing most of the job as, as far as holding your bow up. Your hand is the guide, right? And the reason why we want flexible, or sorry, gave it away. The reason why you want bent fingers, right? A bent thumb and a bent pinky is because uh, locked joints are not flexible. Uh, bent joints are flexible. So just think about a human walking. If you're walking and your knees are uh, flexible, you can walk with a normal gait. But now lock your knees and now I'll try to walk, okay? You look completely ridiculous. The same thing is true with the violin. You never want any locked joints with the violin because locked joints equals a lack of flexibility. A lack of flexibility equals tension. And tension is your enemy with the violin or with any athletic activity. Um, a lot of bad things can happen with tension. Uh, besides injury, it makes it so you're stiff and you just can't play in a fluid-like manner. So, it's very important to have this bent thumb and the bent pinky. And when you see a lot of uh, beginner players play, you'll see them doing this. They'll straighten that pinky. Why? Because it feels stronger. It feels like they can hold their bow better. Um, but that's, you have to do the counterintuitive thing. Now, another little couple of tricks here I'll, I'll tell you about. The, um, if you look really closely, and I'll do a couple close-up shots here, on your bow, it actually has all these different sides to it. It's probably an octagonal stick, so you have eight sides to it. Now, one of the easy ways to get your pinky to be able to stay on that bow is to, when you put the pinky on top of the bow, actually put it on one of the flat sides on the bow here and uh, on one of the octagonal sides here. And that'll help it so your pinky doesn't slip off. Okay, so another little trick is your thumb. Now when you put the thumb inside the bow here, don't push the tip too far so it's sticking out the other side. If you, or it's even close to sticking out the other side. If you do that, your thumb will have a tendency to, to, to move and to slide and then your thumb will straighten. We don't want a straight thumb, we want a bent thumb. We want a flexible thumb, a thumb that can move. So the trick for that is when you put your thumb in, it's almost like the pinky. You want to put your thumb on the outside of the, of the stick. So not too far in, but a little bit on the outside. And then it's gonna be easier to keep that thumb from sliding where you don't want it to. And that's about it. So my recommendation, uh, there's a few exercises that you can do. So the first exercise that I always have all my beginners do is the first exercise, which is hold the bow with your left hand, the, the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. You hold the bow with your left hand, bent thumb, that's step one. Three fingers on the first uh, crease in your knuckles, that's two. Three is to put that pinky on top. So you just practice that over and over again. One, two, three over. One, two, three, over, right? And, the, and then once you do that, you can practice windshield wipers. Windshield wipers. So as you practice these windshield wipers, you feel the weight of your bow is transferred from one part of your fingers to the other. So when your bow is like this, you can feel that bow pushing on your pinky. Now if you take that pinky off, your bow falls. So you realize just how important that pinky is for your bow balance. So windshield wipers. You go over here, you feel the weight of the bow on your index finger. You go over here, you feel the weight of your bow on your pinky. Okay, so you just feel that. That's your second exercise. So the first one is the one, two, three. The second one is your windshield wipers. The third one that you can try, uh, which are called spider crawls. Now this one, your goal is to make it up the bow whilst holding a proper bow grip. So your bow grip is intact, but you're moving your hand up to the tip of the bow. The point of this is to teach your hand to be flexible and to be, and to be able to move, but yet you, you can still hold the bow properly at the same time. Now, once you get more advanced, you get better at this, then work your way down to the frog. That's much more difficult. 
But remember the goal is, is to keep your fingers in the proper position but still be able to move. What's the proper position? The proper zip position is bent thumb, bent pinky, and keep these fingers down. Don't raise these fingers up. That's tension. Keep them down and relaxed. That's not tension. That's nice and relaxed. Okay, so those are some exercises. Those are three exercises you can do. One, two, three, windshield wipers, and spider crawls up and down the bow. Now, after you get pretty good at that, and one exercise you can do um, is to learn how to use how to use this bow grip, and that is long bow strip strokes. So you can do open strings on your violin, viola, cello, bass, doesn't matter. You start, well, actually, it does matter because the cellos and basses generally hold their bows differently. So this would apply mostly to violins and violas. Um, but you're going to start at the frog, and then you're just going to go all the way to the tip, and all the way to the frog. And as you do that, you can feel the bow transfer the balance, where you'll, you'll feel the bow balance transfer from your pinky when you're at the frog to the index when you're at the tip. Pinky, index, pinky, index. And you concentrate on keeping that bow in the same spot on your strings. Now, I'll do another video on long tones, how to practice good tone and stuff like that, but for now. Um, so if you just practice those exercises over and over again, you're gonna have a great bow hold. And starting out with the great bow hold is really important. It's very difficult to fix a bad bow hold if once you start out wrong. Most people who don't have private instructors end up with bow holds where they have straight pinkies and they have straight uh, thumb. And that's a hard habit to break. So if you wanna start out right, just force yourself to do it right. Bent thumb, bent pinky, and do your exercises. And before you know it, this will feel natural. And you will be, uh, very far ahead. So anyways, guys, I hope that that helps. And, uh, you know, like I always say at the end of my videos, you know, if you have any questions or comments, just put them down in the, um, the, uh, the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot of different videos. And of course, you can always call or, you know, contact us here at uh, Kennedy Violins. We're always happy to answer any kind of questions you got because we are players and teachers. So we've been there. We've done that. We're, we're always glad to help. Thanks, guys. Bye.